Today's video, we're gonna talk about JavaScript and how to defer the parsing of it. So I had a question from a local developer about JavaScript and the deferring of the parsing of the JavaScript, how to make page speed not say render, um, eliminate render blocking JavaScript and CSS. So we're gonna talk about JavaScript and how to defer the parsing of it, what happens when you defer it, and how to make it work when it's deferred. Now, this is typically when you're doing your own coding, if you're working with someone else's code, like a plugin or something like that, sometimes you can't defer their JavaScript because of some of the functions and the way it works. And I'll explain a little bit more of that in, in this video, um, at why that happens and what to do if it, if it does, all right? So let's get started on, on the JavaScript and deferring the parsing of it. So, all right, so here on our um, Idea Pro dot tv that we do kind of testing with and stuff we've got just a simple wordpress page that we've our theme that we've created uh, in another video so what i've done here is i've created an example dot php page and this is in the public folder the, the root folder of idea pro tv site so it's outside of wordpress kind of it's in its own little example dot php page and this is just a, a very basic HTML5 page. Now, I do this, instead of doing it into WordPress and the structure and all that stuff, it, I wanna make it as simple as possible, as clean as possible, so that you guys understand what happens and why it happens, and then you can hopefully you know, incorporate that into the plugin you're building or a site you're building or whatever. So, so we're just gonna give this a little title real quick. Defer, defer, I have JavaScript. We'll just call it JavaScript, how about that? JavaScript. I go blank sometimes whenever I'm thinking about this. All right, so we're gonna save that. We're gonna go to ideapro.tv, example.php. All right, so this is our example.php. It's very blank. We can put here, we can say hello. So there's our hello text. All right, so most of the time they talk about, people talk about, so we're gonna, first let's do this. Let's go to uh, Google hosted JavaScript, or jQuery. Let's, get, let's add some jQuery. Google hosted libraries. Do, 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 do. All right, so let's go down to jQuery. All right, so we're gonna grab the script here. And a lot of times people talk about putting the jQuery in the head. I do not like to put it in the head. I like to put it in the footer. Now, if you're deferring it, you can put it in the, the header tag or the head tag, but I still like to put it in the footer. So we'll go down here under body and put that there. All right. So now we have the jQuery. All right, so let's do a div. Um, let's call it testing, All right? And we're gonna put hello in there. We're just gonna move hello down here. And we're gonna style it a little bit. Padding is 15 pixels and background color, we're just gonna say gray, all right? So now we can go back and refresh our JavaScript page here. So now we have this gray div with hello in it, all right? So now using jQuery, we're going to change the color of that div, all right? So underneath the JavaScript, the jQuery script here, we're going to put in script, and then we're gonna say dollar sign, testing. Now we're using the class label here, testing. So this is what the dot is, just like in CSS. So class testing dot CSS background color and we're going to call it yellow. All right. 
So now we go back here and we refresh. As soon as the JavaScript loads, or as soon as jQuery loads and the JavaScript loads, it turns that background yellow, right? It's quick and easy. Now, so now if we defer the parsing of this JavaScript, you can either put just defer or you can put defer equals defer, right? A lot of times I just put defer. It's a little simpler code, cleaner code. There's, there's still, it still validates with HTML. So now if we defer the parsing of the jQuery and we go back here and we reload this page, see it doesn't turn yellow, it, it stays gray. And the reason why is because by telling this to defer, what we're doing is we're telling it to load as the last thing after everything else loads. Now the order matters. So if we were to use jQuery UI and we add it under here, so if we go back to the hosted libraries and we get jQuery UI, let's put that in here, and we put it here. If we don't defer jQuery UI, jQuery UI will load before jQuery because we have it deferred. Now, if we defer the jQuery UI like that, then it's going to defer both of them. Then it's going to load the jQuery first, then jQuery UI. Then it's going to load this script here before it loads these because it's not deferred, right? Okay, so now we're, let's take the jQuery UI out because we really don't need it and I want to keep it clean and, clean and simple, all right? So now again, we have this deferred. We come back here, we refresh. It does not turn yellow, okay? So now what we can do is we can, let's add a button, all right? And that button is change color. Right, and we're going to create a JavaScript function. So we're going to say on click is equal to we'll just whoops change color. We'll create a thing here. So now we can do function change color, and we can put this inside of this function. Right. So now we have the gray box here. We have this button that says change color. Now this is going to work because we're using a function. So it loads this JavaScript before it loads the jQuery, deferred jQuery. Even though it loads it first, because it's a function that we're gonna be calling, it's still going to work. So we'll go back here and we'll hit change color. So see how that works with, because it's a function. If it wasn't a function, it doesn't work. But now, you don't want this to be a function because you don't wanna to have to click to change the color. So we're gonna get rid of this button just for a minute. We're gonna comment it out so it disappears because we're gonna use it again in a little bit. But now we have this jQuery and it's deferred and we have some uh, some jQuery here that changes the background color again it's deferred so now we're going to refresh and it's not going to work okay so now how do we make this work so there's two ways to do it one you can write this in a function and use the button to change the color or you can write it into a function and call that function from another deferred JavaScript, all right? So that's what we're going to do, right? So we're gonna come in here and we're going to, let's, let's, do it two, let's do it two ways. The first way we're gonna do it is we're gonna write a new JavaScript, all right? So we're gonna say example.js. We're gonna save that, we're gonna save it into the root where the example.php is. So now we're going to copy this code over here and we don't need that script tag in there because it's a JS file. Let's clean this up just a little bit. All right, so and we can take this out. But now what we need to do is we need to say script SRC is equal to 
and we can just say example.js because it's in this example.php is in the same folder as example.js. All right, and so we're gonna close that and close the script. Now, if we just do it like this, it's not gonna work. So we're gonna go here and refresh. It's not going to change the background color. But if we defer this, and now we refresh, now it changes the background color because it loads the jQuery and then loads this example.js. And they're both deferred. Does that make sense? If we don't defer jQuery, but we defer this example.js, it's still going to work. And the reason why is because now it's loading jQuery first and then example.js after, even with it being deferred, because it loads deferred items after everything else, right? So we're gonna keep this deferred. And again, we come back here, we refresh, the jQuery loads, then our example.js script loads. Now, we wanna change this on the loading and we wanna use a function, right? So what we can do is we can take this out, we can create the function here if you wanna do it on the same page and we can say change color and we're gonna use this here to change that color, all right? And we're gonna take this out so our, J, so our JavaScript is blank, okay? So now we're back to having this function in there that changes the color. And we're gonna save it and we're gonna go back and it's not going to work, right? Because it doesn't know to call that function. Now, the way we make this work so that you don't have to click a button is we call this function inside of this JavaScript file, all right? So we're gonna say change color, just like that. Oops. Then we're gonna call after that, we're gonna call the JavaScript file, right? And that is example.js, okay? So now what's happening is it's gonna load jQuery, then it's gonna load this function. Actually, it's gonna load this function first. Then it's gonna load jQuery because this is deferred. Then it's gonna load example.js last, which on example.js, we're calling the change color function, this here. So it's gonna change the color of the background. All right, does that make sense? Now, that's how you can do that without having to um, click a button. Now we can also take this out, uncomment this. We can take this out or comment it out so that it doesn't show up. And we can reload and change color. So there's a couple of different ways you can do it. The problem is, is if you have inline JavaScript, like what we were talking about a minute ago, where it's just like this, it's not going to work, right? Unless you hit change color. So that inline JavaScript is what breaks a lot of plugins whenever you defer the JavaScript, the, or like the jQuery. Um, this is where most people run into the problem is they defer the jQuery because the Google PageSpeed tool or GT Metrics or you know something like that has said that the JavaScript needs to be deferred. And when they do that, it breaks any inline JavaScript. So if it's your own code, you can take this inline JavaScript and move it over to another script and then that will, that will work. Oh, we didn't call it. There we go. So by doing that, it makes it work, okay? So I defer all of my JavaScript. I try not to do any inline JavaScript unless it's something that is specifically gotta be inline. Maybe it's uh, calling some PHP or something like that that um, needs to, you know, uh, be passed into it. 
So the rest of the time I use a secondary file like this with all of the JavaScript in it and not inline like this unless I absolutely have to. So I usually try to clean all this up like this. I'll use jQuery and defer it and then I'll have a um, external, which is what it's called, external from the page JavaScript like this and then I'll defer it and it has the information here that I need. So like this and like this. And so now if we refresh this page, it's yellow, right? And we can actually still make it this, a function inside of here if we want to. So I don't know if we did that or not. So let's do that. Let's function, change color, click. We'll change color, click, how about that? And then we'll paste this in there. We'll get rid of this. Okay, so now this change color needs to be click. Let's spell it right. All right. So now what we've done is we've made this a click to change the color. We're deferring the parsing of jQuery and we're deferring our example.js. Now this function, again, it's now a function in there, but it'll still work. Change color, there we go. And the reason why is because it's still going to parse this as long as the page is loaded. Now, if you have a bunch of images and video or a bunch of text and the page is really, really large, you can run into a problem of someone possibly clicking on something before the jQuery and JavaScript has loaded. Because it, it's deferred, it will load last. And that's the reason why it's important to make sure that you have a good page speed on your website. And I'll, I'll give you an example of of idea pro our our main site so if you check our main site in google page speed tool and if you check it in gt metrics well that's running i'll go back to the google page speed tool we have a hundred percent on mobile and a hundred percent on desktop for the google page speed tool so we've already optimized all the JavaScript, all the CSS, all the images, we've optimized everything. And it's really important, that's one of the things that we focus on with development. Now if we go to GT Metrics, they're a little backed up. <laughs> anyway, if we go to GT Metrics, it'll show the same thing. We have 100 on GT Metrics, and we have 100 on YSlow, which is basically Yahoo's version of PageSpeed tool. And so by deferring the parsing of the JavaScript, Wow, that's really slow. Um, we're able to defer the parsing of JavaScript. We defer or the, we eliminate the render blocking CSS. We optimize the images and all that. We get a really good page speed on Google Page Speed Tool and GT Metrics, but for whatever reason, it's taking a long time to load. So I guess I'll stop it there. Um, Maybe this will load before I finish this video, but if you have any questions about JavaScript and deferring the parsing of JavaScript, uh, leave it in the comments below. I hope you guys like this video. Remember to subscribe. Comment if you need any videos made. I try to go through the comments and pull out and make videos based on the comments. Um, pretty much can develop just about anything and still waiting on GT metrics to load here. Um, Anyway, hope you like guys like the video and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.